one rib, pour out the Jameson for ancestors to swig. You rescue me yet again. You put me first everywhere. You make me feel better than the mother too. You rescue me yet again. You put me first everywhere. No topic that concerns me more than the one on the conspiracy to destroy black boys. And the reason is when our little boys are in preschool and primary grades, they're very innocent and very enthusiastic about learning. But something happens to that, and we need to find out what that is. My younger son is on the cover of this particular book, and I would like for him to grow up to be a man. Like many of you already told me, that you have sons and male students as well. Now there's two parts of the conspiracy, volume one, and this is volume two. In volume one, we raise four questions. First question is, when did the conspiracy start? Who is against black boys? Why is there a conspiracy against them? And what exactly is the conspiracy? That's in volume one. In volume two, we look at the relationships between mothers and their sons. That must be studied. We also must look at female teachers and black male students. That must also be studied. We must look at some case studies. In other words, many of us are doing a very good job developing black boys to be men. What is it that some of us are doing that others are not doing? And then last but not least, a program called the Rites of Passage in the Manhood. See, it used to be we knew when black boys became men. But now many of us don't know when we're men. It's how much reefer we smoke, how much wine we drink, how many babies we make. Until black men spell it out to black boys what it means to be a man, this conspiracy will continue. But let's go back to volume one. When did it start? And as we begin to look at that, I want to also share with you why we call it a conspiracy to destroy black boys. You see, contrary to belief at birth, there are more black boys born in the world than there are girls. It's close, but it's 1.03 black boys born in the world to 1.0 black girls. Hear me clearly. At birth, black boys outnumber black girls 1.03 to 1.0. A brief 18 years later, it is now 1.0 available, and that's the key word, available black men, to 1.8 available black women. Almost two adult women for every one adult man. Now the only question that should be going through your minds right now is what happened? We keep raising the wrong question. We keep asking, why do black men hang on corners? Why do black men lack direction? Well, if you ask this question, you ask the question 18 to 30 years too late. It is not a conspiracy to destroy black men. It's a conspiracy to destroy black boys. If you destroy them as a boy, he'll never become a man. And I can look around the room and tell you know where are they. If they are not available to black women, where are they? Call the road. In jail, there are 329,000 brothers in prison right now. One of every four brothers will go to prison. Where else? Or, or death, death. There are numerous ways that we die. There's homicide, suicide, drugs, war, high blood pressure, and the leading killer among black men, lung cancer. Our love for cigarettes, especially cool. Smoke them all day long, die the exact same way. Cool. Where else? We have prison, death. What else to make us unavailable to black women? Yes, homosexuality. Uh, as you said earlier, one of every nine men in this country are homosexual. Where else? Yes? Hospitalized, institutionalized. Okay, so institutionalization, and there's not only in terms of hospitals, but also mental institutions, and of course, when they get released, many times being homeless. There's still one other large popular area. Thimby? They marry white women. Okay, interracial marriages. Now, I want to pause there for a moment, because you would think if anybody is going to marry outside the race, it would be black women. You got two black women for every one black man. But as Thimmy pointed out, it's exactly the opposite. There are 164,000 interracial marriages, of which 116,000 are brothers. That means 48,000 sisters. It's almost a two to one ratio of black men to black women marrying outside the race. But remember, as you said in the earlier workshop, if the definition of beauty is light skin, long hair and blue eyes, why stop with Renee, the light-skinned sister? Why not get you the real thing? There's some serious problems here. And then black men tell me, I can't find a black woman to understand me. You mean out of 20 million black women, you can't find one to understand you? You don't need a white woman, you need a psychiatrist. <laughs> but that's another workshop on relationships. But I just want to share with you, we got some very serious problems. But to tease this audience, black women are tired of being by themselves. And in the earlier issue of Essence Magazine, the article said, guess who's coming to dinner now? 
black women are tired of being by themselves. In other words, brothers, you can't have it both ways. You can't have two black women to choose from and still marry a white woman. You can't have it both ways. Black women are tired of being by themselves. Now, that's the, with regards to the stats, why we wrote the book, because we saw the shortage of black men. But what we want to begin to find out is when did it start? You see, it's called the fourth grade syndrome. Studies show that black boys may be the best students in the country up until the fourth grade. So we wanted to find out what your son or male student was doing at the beginning of the third grade, then at the end of the seventh grade, and then measure the progress. Let me give you three examples. We had a little boy five years ago on an hour reading test score at the 98th percentile in the country. In other words, a walking genius. That means only 2% male, female, white or black had a higher score than he at the beginning of the third grade. At the end of seventh grade, the same boy now drops down to the 35th percentile. Engineer potential here, pimp or pusher now, scores should have improved five years, instead they only improved 1.3. Two more examples. We had a little boy at the 92nd percentile. He dropped down to the 24th percentile, and his scores only improved 2.1. But let me give you the average example. We had a little boy at the 63th percentile. He dropped down to the 4th percentile, and his scores didn't improve a year, a month, a week, not even a day. There are three critical stages in black boys' development. Infancy to 9, 9 to 13, and 13 to 18. You see, it's easy to see the negative behavior here when he's already dropped out, laid about some street corner lacking direction. It's more difficult to see it around 9 years of age, when they begin to sit further in the back of the class, when they begin to ask less questions, when their ball becomes more important in their book, when they begin to cheat on their tests, we appeal to you to turn your sons and male students on early. Teach them how to read early. Teach them the beauty of being black and believing in God early. But many of us have waited, and we have waited almost too late to develop black boys to be men. You know what I'm getting at. America spends $2,300 on Head Start. They spend $38,000 on prison. If Reagan wanted to balance the budget, I can show you could save about $36,000 per person. It's much easier to educate than it is to incarcerate. Now you raise the questions. How long do you stay in Head Start? Year? Two years is the most? How long do you stay in prison? The rest of your life? Question number one. Question number two, does Head Start work? A 19 year study documents that Head Start works, but in prison, 85% of the inmates that get released go right back in. But as Jesse Jackson says, we have two choices. We can either send me to Penn State or to State Penn. It's your choice. We have got to find ways to intervene. Now, we have a whole workshop just on the fourth grade syndrome. I now want to ask you, what are some of the reasons you feel to explain why black students, especially black boys, were doing so well K through three, and now scores decline in the intermediate and upper grades? What explains it? Yes. I think the learning style changes abruptly in fourth grade from what might have been more right brain activities in the primary grades into all of a sudden all left brain activity. Okay, so a change in learning styles or, or methodology from the teacher uh, from a holistic learning style to a left brain. Okay, very good. Any others? Yes? I think that there's a lot of rejection on the part of uh, the female teachers in the classroom. I and and the rejection increases with the upper grades? Why do you think it increases? Because of the students, perhaps it's his uh, natural makeup, hyperactivity mm -hmm. and that sort of thing. And that may be increasing, well, it may be increasing because we're now expecting them to stay in school or stay in a chair yeah. even longer. longer. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any others? that contribute to this fourth grade syndrome. We have a change in learning style. We have the teacher's outlook on the student. What else? Yes? The student becomes more culturally aware and, and differs significantly from the teacher mm -hmm. often. Okay, so the child's now become more aware of their culture and racial identity. Mm -hmm. Okay, very good. Any others? The major reason you have not given yet, and maybe that's why this problem is still with us, Terry? First name is? Richard. I'm sorry, Richard. Well, the peer group starts to form and become stronger about the peer group. And that's unfortunate, Richard, uh, that you said that because as the age increases, peer pressure is on the increase, while parental involvement is on a decrease. I don't know who tell parents when your child gets older, they need less of your time rather than more. When I speak to Head Start parents, 80% of them are there. Elementary school, 30%. High school, almost a joke. We have to work on that. That's another workshop, too, on parenting all the way through, not just in those quote-unquote tender years. But the major reason, it's not on the board yet, still looking for it. Yes, go ahead. I think, too, that young boys, and particularly young black boys, in the primary grades, they have many mother figures, and they...